Good morning, everybody. How are you? Hey. You know something about the I you know the iOS 9 and Periscope uh, scope updates just make me crazy. So I have my camera landscape, but the picture on the iPad is funky. So I don't know what you guys are seeing. I'm moving the bag around to see um I guess that's better. So this is my new before we get started with the watercolor live, this is my new art case. I found this at a local um a consignment shop in um, La Selva Beach, California. Yeah, it's not landscape on my um, iPad, it's portrait. Although on the camera on my phone, it's landscape, so I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've got to think they need another Periscope update. So anyway, this um, this bag, I just fell in love with it. I probably paid a little bit more for it than I should have, but I just fell in love with it. It's about, I keep getting out, asked how big it is, it's about, good morning everybody, um, eight and a half inches this way, and it's about 14 inches across, and it's about six inches deep, and it actually is expandable um, a little bit. You can see that there's a little bit of room, play room here to stuff more things in it. I did create a belly band for it out of some painted fabric, um, painted um, canvas that I had. Hey, Lisa! Um, and I added a couple of belt clips. You can get these easily at the fabric store because um, I have a habit of traveling and then stuffing my bag at the end of the trip full of like all kinds of fun bits and pieces. Good evening, all the way from the Netherlands, cool. Um, so I figured it might need a little bit of extra help staying closed. It is a leather bag, and it is pretty fabulous, and I can fit a whole lot of stuff in here. I've got a, this is a small, hey, a small pa uh, brush case. Um, you can get these really inexpensively at like Hobby Lobby, and I do have brushes in it, but also pens and pencils. And this kind of a case is nice because you don't have to worry about the your bristles on your brushes getting crushed. I have a bag of some water brushes, a couple of binder clips. These are always handy when you're working on your journal if, you know, to hold it open while things are drying. A date stamp, glue stick. Hey, good morning, Artsology, cool. Um, a spray, little spray bottle, oops, for, with usually has water in it, it's almost empty right now. A black ink stamp. Some samples of washi tape, some of which are from Happy Mail that have been gifted to me from you guys. Isn't it though? I love. I agree with you, Art Sherpa. I love. I fell in love with the case. I can't even tell you. A pencil sharpener, some napkins and rags, because if you're going to take your art journal with you, and I always take some watercolor with me, you need to have something like that. A watercolor pad. This is one of those small fluid acrylic um, cold press pads my um, travel watercolors and I just put the rubber band to help keep them closed um, we are getting a little bit of rain yes um, just not a whole lot it, it can hold a, this bag can hold a lot more than you think it can yeah um, these are mini colored pencils these are from the Japanese dollar store with a little uh, pencil sharpener and a small eraser. An old gift card for, you know, glue spreading and that sort of thing. A, a small 10 um, crayon set of Neocolor. An eraser. A pair of scissors. My Ziploc bag of Collage Page, Aileen's, and Gesso. And I have it like this because Frequently when I'm flying with my art bag, this is one of those things I take out and put in the checked luggage because I just don't want to deal with the people at TSA. So it's already in a bag and I can take it in the scissors out and just stick them in the checked luggage. This is my year of my life journal, which as you see when I opened it was already in here and it does fit. 
my watercolor journal also fits in here okay so whoever that is if you're going to just be a troll then I'll block you so just don't even bother you might as well leave now and then I have a small mini cutting pad and a metal ruler and then some little folders and envelopes with paper ephemera and things in them everything fits in this bag and I actually could get a little more in here sometimes I have a exacto knife in here but like the scissors and the bag of collage glue it is one of those things that I usually take out um, for the people at TSA because I just don't want to deal with them. I'm always the one on the trip that gets snagged and stopped and I just don't get it. Because <laughs> I look, I don't know. Yes, and I love this, I love my Harbor Freight bag, don't get me wrong, I still have it. And I have other, you know, bits of travel art stuff. What I bring with me really depends on where I'm going. And um, so sometimes I change up what I'm bringing depending on where I'm going. That's a good idea. Um, so I change up what what is in here depending on where, where I'm going and what my trip is, you know, what's entailed with my trip. Um, and all the extra surplus travel art stuff lives in the Harbor Freight bag in between trips. So... But everything I need in here, I try not to really not to bring more than this because more than this I just don't use. But if I'm going someplace where I'm going to not be doing any watercoloring and I'm going to mostly be working in my um, year of my life journal, then I'll bring less of the watercolor stuff and more um, things for the year of my life journal. So I just wanted to, I got a lot of questions about this so I wanted to show this really quick. And it's about the size. I love this bag. I got to tell you, it's functional and pretty. Um, you know, I love the fact that it's a leather suitcase. You could probably find something. It's not heavy. It's actually a lot less heavy than the Harbor Freight bag. The problem with the Harbor Freight bag is I have a tendency to overload it and then it gets really heavy and I can't lift it through the airport. Um, it also is open on the top and although it hasn't been a problem yet, I could see me stuffing it under the seat and having something fall out and then, you know, with my luck, it would be my Kindle or something, and that would be an auto pro That would be a big problem. Um, this one closes up tight. It's, you know, it's just big enough to hold everything, but not too big that I'm tempted to overstuff it and have it get too heavy. You probably could find something similar at a thrift shop or an antique store. Um, it's about the size of an old-fashioned um, train case, cosmetic train case. In fact, I'm not so sure that wasn't what it originally was. This is a repro, reproduction case. It's not a genuine antique, but you know, I bet if you look around, you can find something similar. I know Michelle um, from Lady Blue Studios posted a black something similar that she found at a thrift shop recently. Um, and you don't have to do a lot to dress them up. You know, like I said, I just made this belly band yesterday. It took like 10 minutes. So, or the day before, and so it didn't take long. Um, and I just used some painty fabric that I had from my, actually it was drop fabric from, from down here. So, anyway, there's that. All right, so shall we get started this morning? Playing with some watercolors now that I'm, I'm kind of out of breath this morning. This morning. Sewing would take me days. <laughs> well, you know, you could do um, a belly, you could get an old belt um, and just shorten it to fit around the case. If you have, you know, here in San Jose, um, that's a good idea. Maybe I will do a tutorial on the belly band. And, um, uh, oh, flower fell out. Um, here in San Jose, we have a um, little old-fashioned shoe man. I think he's the last one left in the area. And he is a really great guy, little, little old guy. But he's a really great guy, and he, um, I know I could go to him with the suitcase because it's leather at any point should it need repair and get him to fix it for me. But also if I wanted him to, he would, I know, make a leather belly band if I wanted. But that's a good idea. I will see about doing a tutorial, and um, it's really easy straight sewing. It's not anything very complicated, and if you don't sew, if you uh, or even have a sewing machine, if you maybe have 
a friend that does, um, it, it, like I said, it's really easy. And you can get those clips at any fabric store in the section where they have the notions where they have all the stuff to make belts with. And you could get a belt from like the thrift store, just shorten it, and that would work too. And wrap a belt around it, depending on how big your case is. Okay, so we're going to get started with some watercolor. We're going to just start with the basics. All right, and I have an idea for another one of these cards, which I'll explain in a minute. Let's see, I need my pencil sharpener. All right. So part of learning watercolor is learning what you can and can't do with the paint or what kind of, and I, I, I have to hesitate to say can't because in my mind, there's just different ways to work with a watercolor. And my screen's not frozen. Anybody else? Um, there's just different um, effects that you're gonna get. Okay, so depending on what you do with your watercolors, you're gonna get different effects. Now like this one is um, really wet watercolor that I poured some salt on and then let it dry. Um, this is really wet watercolor that I squished plastic wrap into and push, pushed it down and then let it dry. And look at, look at that effect on that. This one is doodling with white crayon and then watercoloring over it. Um, and I made notes on the back of these as I did them. Um, this is just watercolor with lots of water and letting it pool on the paper. This is gesso through a stencil and then watercoloring over it. This is just watercolor splatters. Watercolor blotted with tissue paper. And in the watercolor world, we're not supposed to use blot. We're supposed to use lift, but you know, blot. I like blot. Um, watercolor with alcohol drop, drops of alcohol dropped in it while it was still wet. See what that does? Um, watercolor scratched with a stick while it was wet. And this is watercolor blended together in a rainbow fashion um, while it was wet. And if you do it right, you notice you don't get any shades of brown in there. So these basic things are some of what we're gonna work on today. And while I was getting ready for this and thinking about if I should show the art bag or not, I actually thought of a new one. So I'm gonna make a new card. Now these are Zentangle cards. I actually had a Zentangle kit that I bought God knows how long ago. I never used and I found this stack of cards in them so my idea was to take these cards do a def different watercolor technique on them and make notes on the back and then at some point I'm going to bind them all together it'll be my own personal little reference book so that's why I have these um, so before we get started actually you know what let's work on these because I everything that we're going to do today we can do on these all right so on our first card we're going to work with um, just creating simple shapes and blending colors. Now the first thing we need to do, you can use any watercolor paints. Um, what kind of paint you're using when you learn is not as important as... Yeah, that works too. I have a grid in your journal with techniques. That's a fabulous idea. Uh, whatever works for you, but doing a page with the different techniques or pages or little cards or something um, this is the best way to learn about watercolor before you get started painting anything super important to just play with your um, supplies and um, figure out what they'll do and what ways you like to work with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my watercolor palette wet. Now I did drop this the other day and this whole thing came out. <laughs> this whole thing, the whole thing broke into, yeah see, came into like a whole bunch of pieces. So I think I'm going to be transferring it to a metal box soon. But first thing we're going to do is get the paints wet. Okay. Yeah, try to get out and rejoin. I'm not sure. I only know that I bet you it has something to do with the iOS 9.01 update. <laughs> I, and I, I bet you it does. I'm going to just use this simple round brush. This is the one that came with the palette. It's a round number six. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to just 
create some basic geometric shapes and while we're doing that we're going to be learning about uh, what colors blend and make nice other colors and what colors don't and what happens with the paint when it's put down on a wet surface versus put down on a dry surface. These are things that you should know when working with watercolor. So I'm going to get my brush damp. I'm going to start with red and this is Matter Lake Deep. These are Van Gogh watercolors, but use what you have. Choose a red color from your palette. And I just want you to, on dry paper with your paint, I want you to draw a circle. And I think every week, as much as I can be on, um, some weeks I maybe won't be able to be on, but as much as I can, we're going to be on here once a week with just some basics like this. Oh, good. I'm glad. Okay, so now that we have that paint on the dry paper, now if you don't get the paper wet, it's going to just stay there. But I just rinsed my brush off. I have no more paint on it, just water. It's just damp. And I'm going next to the paint. And can you see what that paint is doing? And never fear if you miss part of this because we're having problems with um, the watercolor. You know, this is going to be on replay, and I am going to actually put these on YouTube. They'll be part of Watercolor Wednesday. So once I got my circle painted on, now I'm just going in with just water. I don't have any more paint. And look what the paint that was already on there is doing. So with watercolor, you can really sort of control where it goes by using water. Now, I wanted it to bleed into the middle. I did not want it to bleed to the outside, so I only got the inside wet. Okay, now I'm going to go in with a blue, and I don't want to have a green blue. I want a blue blue. If you put any green in here with this, you have run the chance of getting some brown. Remember your elementary school color blending, um, red and blue make purple right but if you put yellow in there you're gonna get brown I'm gonna, so I'm gonna use ultramarine this is ultramarine deep and I'm gonna go right next to where we just were and I'm gonna paint another circle and this time I'm gonna go right over the red and that paint is gonna go right into that red circle I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to get some just plain water and I'm going to blend a little bit on the inside. And then I'm going to take my damp brush again and I'm going to go a little bit on the outside. And if you tilt your paper and you get the water to run, this is just water. I'm not adding any more paint. And you can see where the red and blue met. They made a purple color, dark purple. I would probably, if I was doing this as a real composition, I would come over here with a little bit of water. That was probably too much water. So if you dry your brush off on your rag, get it almost dry, and then put it back in the water, you can lift up some of that water and pigment a little bit. And I, I like the idea of making having a couple more drips here. Just That pleases my eye more. So that's just basic geometric shapes and blending blending the shapes. And it's good to practice a few of these. I'm gonna put that over there and let that dry. I have another piece of, this is just plain watercolor paper. So it's also good to try different kinds of paper. This is Zentangle paper. It's pretty smooth. It doesn't have much texture to it. It's not really meant for watercoloring. So this is a 140 pound Strathmore watercolor paper. And actually, let, this is the same paper. Let's use this one, it's a little bigger. 
Um, these are just scraps that I use and I cut them um, into small pieces and use them as um, ATC cards or small little paintings that I sell in my um, Etsy shop. Wait, coffee break. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's use some different colors. This time we're going to start with um, Azo Yellow Deep. is just a deep dark or it's an orangey yellow and I'm just putting the pigment on dry paper again and this is good to do over and over and over again with different colors so that you learn what colors blend how they blend what secondary colors they make and which ones you like working with and which ones you don't. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not putting any more pigment on here. This is just straight water. And I'm gonna get some of this to drip down here. Knock it on the table. I like things to be drippy. Hey everybody, hey Michelle, how are you? I always know it's you, the red, white, and blue heart. Okay, so I love that and I love the way that looks. Now though, I want to show you guys, I'm gonna take a larger flat brush and I am going to get the paper wet next to our yellow circle. So you've seen a couple times now how the paint goes on to dry paper. Let's see how it goes on to wet paper. So now I'm going to use um, permanent red deep. Red and this yellowy orange should blend very nicely together and make a nice orange color. Remember this, it's wet right here, right? I can see, I don't know that you can see it on the camera, but it's a little bit shiny. So look what happens because the paper is wet. These are things you need to know how your watercolors are going to react. You know, when you go to paint a portrait or you go to paint a landscape, you want to know what to expect from your paint and what kind of textures you can do, you can get with your paint, how you can control it and how you can't. This these these are important skills to learn and so practicing on these little cards and doing these little sort of doodly shapes is important. So I'm just, I'm going in with a little bit more paint around the edge. And I'm just using the tip of, very tip of my paintbrush to sort of the, the paper is wet, so they're going to bleed a little bit, but I'm just putting in some like sketchy lines. Just I'm just barely touching the paper with the tip of my brush. So now I'm just got the I have the wet brush again, so I want to come in here. And I want them to blend a little bit. The two circles. Yeah, something like that. All right, put that one aside. Whoops. All right, should we do another one? Let's do the, let's do one on a card because I have an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna get this card wet with a flat brush. I'm gonna get the whole thing wet. And then I'm gonna stick with the flat brush for a minute and I'm gonna get some uh, pigment on here. I wanna use kind of a dark color because I want this to really show up so I can really see or do I want to use a light color? Oh, I think maybe I want to use a blue. So I have some blue paint in my lid here, so we're going to use that. 
and we are going to put this lay this on top of the white paper this is just you know a wash of color now yes you could do this with a couple different colors um, while it's wet you can drop things like salt into it and the salt is going to pick up some of the pigment and when it dries you you just let it dry naturally and when it dries you brush the salt off and you get this mottled texture. You can also squish uh, plastic wrap, crumple it up and stick it in the wet paint and put something heavy on top of it and let it dry and then you'll get um, this effect. Um, I had the idea that what I want to do is put some pencil, Sabilo pencil shavings in it. I know that sounds crazy. So that's why I wanted the pencil sharpener. Let's see how to get this open though. Oh, there we go. Oh, it needed to be emptied anyway in a huge way. Okay. So I want to drop some Stabilo pencil shapings in here. Stabilo pencil is water soluble. And um, look at that. Can you see that? I'm going to hold it up in just a second. drop the big pieces off but look at that so I'm gonna let that dry completely and naturally and then I'm gonna brush it off and I'll put post some pictures to social media later that is really cooler than I thought it was gonna be so think of some of these things as a backgrounds for some of your journal pages and um, just practice and have some fun um, I learned how to do watercolor by doing simple doodles and I will show you exactly what I mean by that let's see I had a general's layout pencil which is this which is a soft lead smudgy pencil that's not really water soluble in it's the traditional sense but when you get wet it will smudge okay and I would just draw doodles Now I have Sibilo pencil shavings everywhere. Okay, so we'll just do a simple, and I just did simple doodles. Nothing, you know, fancy and spectacular. Um, just simple, simple doodles. I'll do one of the ones that I, I used to do this a lot, this one. Okay, and then I would, and then I would color it in. Can I move down? Oh, you mean closer? Yes. Let's see. There we go. How's that? Sorry about the shaking. That happens when I touch the phone. Okay, so it's just a simple teacup doodle. I did, I used to do these a lot. You could do a flower. It doesn't have to be, you know, a G. Oh, you're welcome. It doesn't have to be a genius drawing or anything, just a simple doodle. And then color it in with your watercolors and practice some of the blending you've learned from doing your geometric shapes by coloring this in. So let's do that. And I'm gonna start with, what color? Um, cobalt blue, I think. And I'm going to lay the color on without getting the paper wet around the edges where that teacup would be darker, where there would be shadows. Then I'm going to come in with a damp brush with no more paint on it, and I'm going to get the paper wet. Now remember that this isn't watercolor paper, so you're going to get different effects from the paint than you would on watercolor paper, but this is the kind of paper I learned on. I did not understand when I started that there was a difference between the papers. Use what you have. 
Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the saucer and the handle. And I'm just using the tip of my brush. I'm not, um, I'm not touching it much. My brush had a little too much water on it there. And let's see, let me put this here. Then I'm gonna come in with just the damp brush with no water and that this soft layout pencil may blend a little bit with the paint and it's going to smudge a little bit. I was always okay with that because in my mind that just added extra interest and shadows to my painting. And just simple almost childlike paintings. They don't have to be anything too complicated. So I'm going to do the same thing to the handle. I'm going to go in around with the pure pigment you know, around the edges of the handle that would be farther away from the viewer. And then I'm going to come in with my damp brush. And just add water. And that paint is going to take the easier road. So it's going to follow the water rather than try to go into the paper. Okay. So then I'm going to take my um, blue and I'm going to do the inside of the cup but I'm also going to because this is a cup of tea or coffee right so I'm going to take my burnt umber a brown and I'm going to put a little bit of that in here and it's going to blend with the blue paint that's why and then I'm going to take the same brown and I'm going to go over my swirls And then I always liked to, and I still like the color, like to go around my piece with yellow ochre. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna take my clean water. I have two waters here. One's dirty, one's cleaner than the other. And I'm gonna go around the edges with the yellow ochre. Then I'm gonna clean off my brush and just go in with some water and blend the pigment up to the doodle. And this is just all stuff I learned from just playing with my paints. I didn't take a class. I have since, but when I first started, I just I just got some paints and started playing. And I almost used like a scrubbing motion. And some of this other paint here is going to blend because it's wet and I'm okay with that. In my mind, it just makes the piece more interesting. This is where, though, if you don't have watercolor paper, it can get a little tricky because your paper is going to want to pill. I'm, I'm really kind of scrubbing at the paper, and it's going to want to pill and really buckle like crazy. Um, when I first started doing these, I did them on drawing paper which is totally the wrong kind of paper. <laughs> but actually this Zentangle paper doesn't seem to be, it's not watercolor paper, but it doesn't do too badly. So I like that. I actually want this to bleed a little more than it did. And I'm gonna add some more of a blue to the teacup. I think I'm gonna go in with Prussian blue. Well, this is, I just want you to do, you know, practice a doodle. It could be a flower. It could be, you know, it could be a teacup. It could be anything. Just practice doing these simple, like, you know, shapes. Thanks for the hearts. I love the hearts. I know some people are having problems with the screen freezing up this morning. 
I'm gonna just blame it on the iOS updates. I don't know what to say. I'm on my I'm viewing on my iPad. I'm filming on my phone. It seems to be fine. It could also be that we have a bad connection. Now right here it bled a little bit outside the line. I'm not super, you know, upset about that, but oh well, just got some stabilo pencil in there. So, you know, happy accident. You have to figure out how to work with that, right? Okay, so we have some bleeding nonsense going on here. So we're going to figure out how to work with that. So we're going to go in and I'm going to take some Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a dark, like, blue-black. It's not black. There we go. I did lots of these little doodles and they were printed on greeting cards and magnets and all kinds of stuff. Um, sometimes after they were dry, I'd write, you know, a little. Yes, it says Artsology. So there you go, watercolor doodle. We'll set that aside to dry. What's another one that we can try? Is there one that you guys want to see? Think think that keeping in mind that right now we're doing practice basics. Let's do some color blending. Taking notes. Okay. Let actually let's do let me show you the white crayon and let's do some color blending. Let's see. Um crayon. Okay, so this is just a white children's crayon, nothing special, okay? Now, keep in mind when you do this, you are not going to be able to really see what it is you doodle until after you paint it, but that's okay. Again, this is a scrap of 140-pound watercolor paper, and let's just do a simple, hopefully simple doodle. I don't know. Like I said, I won't know exactly what I'm doodling or how it's turning out until after I can barely see it. You guys won't be able to see it at all. Okay, so I just did a doodle with the white crayon. White crayon, the white waxy crayon is going to act as a resist. So now we're going to come in with some of our colors, which I have to get wet again. bottles running out of water okay so I'm gonna start with this lemon yellow and then I'm gonna come in with some of the blue can you see there where the um, crayon is Now, of course, you could do it with a colored crayon. Keep in mind with watercolor, for the most part, you want to start lighter and work your way darker. I like the challenge of working with a white crayon. And I'm going to go in with a green. I really like sap green. It's a yellowy green. I'm going to just come in here with some water. And the green's going to mix with the blue a little bit, but green and blue mix are mix well. After all, blue and yellow make green, so that I'm not too worried about. I'm going to just blend my colors out towards the edge of the paper so they sort of fade out towards the edge of the paper. You of course could fill the whole entire thing in with paint. But I encourage you to try it either way and play with it and see, you know, what you like. You may find that you like it like this, or you may find that you prefer it to be all filled in. So there's just, and these, I save these, I send these out in happy mail and things, or use them as bookmarks. 
Okay, so now let's try some color blending. We'll use one of these. Again, 140 pound watercolor paper. Now, here's our sample that I've done already. If, for the most part, you keep your colors like this and you're careful about how they blend, then you're going to be fine. The, where you want to be careful is the green to the purples because those two colors, if they mix together, will mix brown. Um, remember from school, you know, red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, uh, red and blue make violet, but if you mix all those together, you just get brown. Okay, so let's start with red. I'm going to use Matter Lake Deep, I think. I don't think this is the color I used last time. Okay, then I'm going to go in with Vermilion, which is an orange. Then I'm going to go in with my brightest yellow, which is the lemon. Before those dry too much, I'm going to rinse my brush off and just get some water. And I'm going to just in between them, just pull in the water. And if they get too dark, because I want to see the dark pigment fading into the lighter pigment, then I'm going to just pull the damp brush through the water and it's going to lift up some of the paint. And I'm going to dab it off on the rag. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the orange and the yellow. get it wet and then the two colors are going to just move towards each other into the water and then I'm going to pull the brush through it and tap it off on the rag if it gets too dark I'm trying to get that orange spot out of the yellow there we go <laughs> Okay, so then I'm going to go in with a green, and I'm going to try to keep it as true to a green green as I can. So I'm going to go into permanent green. And then blue indigo. Violet, so blue, ultramarine blue. I'm trying to remember rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, blue, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay, so then I'm gonna do blue. And then before we get too far, I'm gonna get clean off my brush and do the thing with the water again. Some more green in here. Now you notice how down here, I haven't touched this down here and it's still blending in together. It's creating some nice streaks and striations. I love that. Um, now I don't have um, all the right colors on here. I'm trying to remember what I used last time. I think what I did was I put some more blue. And then I put the purple. I have a purple, a dark purple. And I think I mixed them together right here. And we're going to go in with the water, just the plain water. That was too much water. So that's a basic rainbow color blending, but what I want to do is I want to take just some plain water and I'm going to just drip it onto the paper, onto the edge, and then I'm going to do this. 
and you're going to get a streak of like black or brown because all these colors are going to mix together. Oops. And the other thing I want to do is this is alcohol rubbing alcohol, just plain rubbing alcohol. Look what that does to the paint. Now wouldn't that be a great background for a um, art journal page or some sort of mixed media piece? These are the kind of things I want you guys to play with and practice with your watercolors and start learning what you can and can't do with them. Just play and have some fun. Don't worry about making a Picasso or anything. The other thing you could do is you could write uh, something across here while the paint is wet and by writing I mean scratch it in with something pointy. I don't even know what this is from. I have a feeling it's a knitting thing but it's pointed at both ends. I never use it for knitting, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to scratch something in there. Now it may not show up as it dries or it may show up very well, I don't know, um, but scratching into the wet paint, and we'll find out, you get something like that. That's just scratched into the wet paint. You can kind of see some of it showing up. So we're going to let this dry and I'm going to show you about how to scratch into the paint. All right, let's see. So we're going to just get this card wet and I'm going to use what color? I'm going to use one of my favorite colors in this palette, which is this Quadacridone Rose, which is a dark pink, which is just lovely, lovely, lovely. I love when I have colors and I don't have to mix anything. <laughs> I know how to mix colors, but I don't like doing it. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just, I put the, pi pi the pigment on the paper, it's dry. I'm spreading it around a bit with wet water, nothing else, right? And we have, and this on its own, and that's all I did, that's just pigment laid on and then spread out in a random fashion with a little bit of water. That's why, exactly that's why I get them all because I don't like to mix colors. Uh, but we will be practicing color mixing in a future watercolor Wednesday and with acrylic paint in a Monday with deco art. FYI. Okay, so you this on its own is a really pretty mixed media background that you could use on a greeting card, an art journal page, on anything. By itself it's really pretty. Of course you can take something sharp and pointy or maybe less sharp and pointy. These are all knitting, double pointed knitting needles. And I don't really knit anymore, but they work great for this. So the other thing you can do is you can do this and you can scratch some designs into the paint and look what happens. Look how the pigment like sinks into those um, indentations you've made in the paint and as it dries they sometimes even get more prominent as the pigments move around. Yeah. So that's always a good one to try also. I'm running out of room to put these. All right, does anybody, don't, don't be afraid. Just, I just want you to play right now. I want you to play with different techniques. I want you to play with your paints and your colors and just try some things and see what you like and what you don't. And, you know, start yourself your own little reference page or, you know, card set and write notes on the back. You know, what you did that you like, what the, you did that you don't like. Um, That's perfect. Now, a lot of these like random things, even if you don't like them, and if you don't, you know, you're not happy with how they turned out, think about how this would work as a background to a tag or a card 
with a stamped phrase over the top or quotation um, or one of my, um, maybe my feather stamp over the top or something like that. Really, really cute stuff that you can just stick in a journal page or you can stick in some happy mail. Does anybody have any questions while well, I drink some coffee? You should try them with your doodles for sure, Sarah. And you can run a hundred. I will put I will put pictures on Instagram, and I will. Um, oh, you did, Cindy. I'm going to put some of these pictures on Instagram and social media tonight. And um, I know from experience, you can put a hundred and forty pound watercolor paper through a standard inkjet or deskjet HP printer because that's what I have. Um, but you need to um, be aware that the ink will run. Um, what you can do, because Sarah is a fabulous world-class doodler as far as I'm concerned, um, she could doodle them with a waterproof marker and then watercolor them in. I think that would be fabulous. But those of us who can't, you know, who want to just buy her doodles, you have to set the ink um, with a fixative uh, before you watercolor on them um, or you need to have them printed at like um, staples or something on cardstock. You can, I do recommend that you try these techniques on plain paper, which is what we've used here today. Also try them on paper that has been um, treated with gesso or absorbent ground. Now, watercolor will work on your standard white acrylic or black gesso. Um, it works a little differently on gesso versus like Golden's absorbent ground. There are gessos made specifically for watercolors. Um, Daniel Smith has, um, water, it's called watercolor ground. He has um, white, black, and clear. Um, they're all a little different. Use what you have, and I would, when you're prepping your cards, prep some that are plain straight paper, and prep some that have your gesso and, and or grounds on them, whatever you have in your stash of stuff, and do the same technique on straight paper and then do it again on one that has gesso to see how the pa paint reacts differently. In my experience, you have, um, I have, uh, I would try plain paper and watercolor paper um, because you really want to know what you can and can't do with your watercolors um, with um, all the kinds of paper because depending on what you're doing, you know, with your paints in the future on your journal pages. They, you might be working on notebook paper. Um, if you are working on thinner, like notebook or drawing paper, you definitely want to work, use a gesso or a ground before you watercolor. Use a clear one if you've already done stuff and you want to watercolor over the top of it. Um, but know that in my experience, I have more trouble getting the paint to stop blending on gesso than I do on straight paper. Um, with straight paper, I can dry this like it's dry right now, I could go over it with another color and it would blend a little bit with the colors that were already dry in here, but these are not going to move as much as they would if they were still fresh. Um, if the background here was gessoed, then these seem to activate really quickly and easily. Um, and I'm thinking that's because really the paint is sitting on the surface of the paper on the gesso and it's not being absorbed into the fibers. And when the paper is raw, it's being absorbed in and staining the paper so it's not as easily moved around. But you should try it both ways on a few different kinds of paper. Just cut yourself some little cards and do, you know, different techniques on the little cards and then make notes on the back. Okay, so, you know, it really is a matter of opinion. Um, I, for the most part, when I do my water coloring, I use 140 pounds just because it's affordable and um, it's always on sale. <laughs> yes, I love 300 pound watercolor paper. It's really expensive. I do know from trying different kinds of watercolor paper that I prefer cold press, which is a little bit, got a little bit of a texture on it. Can you even see that on camera? It's got a little bit of a texture to the surface of the paper. I don't know if you can even see. Um, hot press is completely smooth. Cold press has some texture. There is two other textures of paper. There's soft press, 
which is a little bit between cold, um, the smooth and cold press. And then there's rough press. Okay, so cold, uh, hot press is completely smooth. Soft press is a little bit textured, but not a lot. Cold press is more textured. Rough press is the most textured. Um, I prefer sort of a medium ground for me, and I like cold press. I don't, um, I like the nooks and crannies and texture you get in the paint with a little bit of a texture. But Sarah, yeah, Sarah, if you're gonna do the doodly thing, I would use the hot press because it's completely smooth. It's going to be easier for you to do your doodles on. And then if you want to get some of the texture like you would on the cold press paper, what I would recommend is um, getting the paint on there and getting it wet and then putting a little bit of just table salt in the paint and just leaving that alone and let it dry naturally. Don't try to heat gun it or anything. And when that's dry, it's going to give you a little bit of a mottled textured effect um, that you can, you can kind of see on here. If you use the bigger crystal grains that you use, the more the more of that that you get. But you can see that on there. There are ways to get texture on the soft press paper. I mean hot press paper. Yeah, it does seem to bleed a little more in hot press. And here is our Stabilo pencil one. You know, I really like this. Now I'm not going to be able to em empty my pen pencil sharpener like ever. Look at that. Oh, I love that. I could see that on a background. <laughs> and I can show you on this one, it's still, is there any wet spots? There's a few wet spots. I can show you on this one. So you just take, this one has some wet spots right here. Stabilos are not expensive. They cost uh, about $1.40 at my local art supply store. You have to probably go to your fine art supply store to get it. Um, and yes, I keep salt in my art room. Standard, generic, table salt. So I'm just going to pour a little bit into my hand. And I'm going to dump the salt into the parts of the paint that are still wet. And you can see right away how the salt grains are getting darker colored because they're picking up the pigment. And what happens is the salt grains absorb the pigment and leave a lighter spot in the, in the painting. Any kind of salt, yeah, kosher salt. You could use, um, you know, the thicker grained sea salt. Um, it will pick up more pigment. So try what you have. You can also, you know, watercolor over a background that's got some gesso on it that you've put the gesso through a stencil. Remember, I did, I showed one of those. Where is it? Here we go. So. You can do gesso or modeling paste through a stencil. Let it dry completely. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, we won't, yeah, I have ghosts at my house. If you believe in that sort of thing, which we do here, um, my husband does now too. We had an incident really recently. <sighs> the exploding sugar bowl. I'll tell you guys about it maybe someday. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so, yeah, see? Um, so this is just, um, you can do gesso or modeling paste through some stencils, let it dry completely, and then watercolor over it. And what's going to happen is your gesso and or modeling paste is going to be more resistant to the paint than the paper, raw paper will. And without using any other colors or any fancy techniques, you'll get something that looks like this. This is through one of, this is my flower stencil which is available in my Etsy shop. This is the one with saran wrap. You just get it, like this one, you just get it really puddly with water. And then while it's wet, you literally scrunch up some saran wrap, some plastic wrap and stick it in there. 
And then what I do is I usually throw a book or something on top of it and just let it dry. Once it's dry, you lift the book up and you peel the saran wrap off and you're going to get this really fabulous texture in the paint. And all of these are fun to do like in the backgrounds of your paintings um, before you get started with the focal point. Like couldn't you see something like this in shades of blue with then on top of it, you know, a field of flowers or something on top of it. Yeah, totally you could try with foil. That would be an interesting experiment. I'm going to have to try that now that you said that, Cindy. This is the salt one. This is the scratching one. So this is the one where we blended with um, our colors. This is the one with alcohol, which I kind of showed you on another piece. This is just wet paint, and I got a lot of dark pigment on there. And then what I did was I went in with a paper towel or a cloth, and I just lifted up certain sections and it left, you know, it leaves the marks from the paper towel. It leaves the pattern from the paper towel or the rag in the paint. This is just really watery, inky watercolor paints, paint splattered on there with the end of a brush or even with a toothbrush. This is um, like what we did this one where it's just paint with a lot of water and then um, just moving the paint around letting it dry. Pooling. I don't know what it's called. That's what I call it. Pooling. And this is the white crayon. And now we can add the Stabilo pencil one because I think this is cool. And now I'm going to have to do another one with tin foil. <laughs> All right. So I think that's a lot of beginning stuff for you guys today. And I'm gonna, let me zoom out just a little bit. If it will let me. There we go. Cheesecloth. Yeah, anything like that that would leave an impression in the paint. You could, you know, get your paper wet like we did here, then lay that thing on top of it and then let it dry. If you really want it to leave a deep impression, put it down, maybe put a piece of plastic, um, you know, I have little, I have little pieces of hard plastic around the studio. I used to use them as pallets, but you could put that down on top of the cheesecloth and putting a book and then, um, I'll answer that in a minute, Jerry, and then put a book on top of it and just let it dry. Set it aside and just let it dry. Um, I'd love to see different, um, if you guys come up with different texture things, um, I would love to see them, post them to social media, tag me, and um, yes, I will be um, doing um, this every week as I can, as my time allows, and they will, uh, this will all be on YouTube for replay, yes, definitely it will be. And I will be adjusting the screen resolution so that, you know, it's actually landscape and uh, making it as big as I can. It takes me a couple days to get the video downloaded off my phone and then in, edited in the software and all that. Um, the one from Monday should be up right now. Any other questions? You know, I don't know any other way to be but sharing with my art. I want you guys all to have as much fun with it as um, I did, I do. And, you know, for me it's very therapeutic and I know there's lots of you out there who need that and want that. So, you know, I want to share what, I, what I'm doing with all of you. The comments don't come through on YouTube. You're welcome. Um, they don't. That's the only drawback and I, I hope they fix that someday because I'd like to see the comments on the video. Love you too, Cindy. I love all you guys. I'll be talking to myself, exactly, because there won't be any comments, you know, really. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm always, if you think about it, I'm always in a room talking to myself. <laughs> Let's just not tell my therapist that, because, you know, <laughs> she already thinks I'm nuts. All right, you guys have fun with it. I want to see what you do with your watercolors. I'm going to let this one with the salt on it dry. And now I'm going to have to go break out the cheesecloth and the tinfoil. Um, we will be back next week with a watercolor Wednesday. And like I said, if there's a week I can't do it, I'll let you all know. And um, as much as I can, these will be on YouTube. And I will be here live um, once a week. And I'd love to keep working on basics with you all. If you have specific questions or something you'd like to see in the next one, 
then I want you all to um, message me over Facebook or social media. Yes, A Life of Art and Self-Expression is my, uh, thank you, Jerry. That's my uh, Facebook group. Request to join. We let everybody in. Um, and you can ask, tag me and um, request certain things from the next live Watercolor Wednesday. Um, I want to start from the basics, and I want you guys to start. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Start with playing with your color, creating texture, making marks, making yourself a little reference set of things, you know, of techniques and ideas to create texture and what you can and can't do with your paints. And just remember to have fun and just play. And as we progress, hopefully we'll get to the point where we're doing landscapes or portraits or something like that. Um, but right now, let's just focus on the basics. You don't have to have fancy paint. You can just use what you have. I started with um, Art District set of, I think, 12 colors. And um, whatever, these cards are, let's see, three, I think they're three and a half inches square. Yeah, they're three and a half inches square. Play, play, play. That should be your new mantra. That's, you know, we forget how to play as adults, and I think that's a shame. I like these because it's a cute little reference book. It's not too um, too much, and at some point I'm going to bind them. I have a zutter, so at some point I'm going to punch holes in all of them and bind them all together. Don't forget to make notes on the back. Yeah, basic. Salvin Ar Salvation Army, Goodwill. You can find watercolor paints there. You don't need anything fancy. I wouldn't do, I mean, even Crayola. If all, that's all you can afford, do that. If you can afford it, um, get a little bit better than Crayola. I'd like to, you to see, to see you at least get a student grade um, set, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Go to Michael's or Joann's and you'd use a 40% off coupon. And you know, both of those Michael's and Joann's have coupon apps for your smartphone and so you don't even have to carry a paper coupon, which I love, or Hobby Lobby. See, use the set you want. And yeah, if you can get samples for, of the Golden Quar um, watercolor paints, they're fabulous. And if you can get um, samples of the Daniel Smith watercolors, they have a sample card set that includes all over 200 colors in their line. Um, I think it's like $25 or something. So it's not super expensive. Golden has watercolor. And if you go to your fine art, local fine art store, ask them if they have sample cards because they have sample cards and... This is my sample card book that I made a while back. And I cut up my Daniel Smith cards. They were big 8.5 by 11 sheets. But, um, and I put them in here. They're all in a little book. These are the Quar sample books, and they have three different ones. And um, the sample books come with a piece of watercolor paper. And they um, have actual dots of the paint that you can use. And the colors are the same as your acrylic paint line. Look at this. This is the teal in the watercolor. Which, of course, I had to buy because I love that color. So, and I got my samples at my local fine art supply store. I said when I was there, you know, do you have any, happen to have any sample cards of the Quar watercolors? They said, yes, we do. Would you like some? I got them for free. So, and if you're on the East Coast and you're near the Golden, you know, company... You know, our friend here, Cindy Utter, went there recently, and she got some samples from them for free, and she took a tour, so. Yep, make friends with Cindy, because she lives near Golden. <laughs> All right, you guys, I am going to go. I have a bunch of video to edit, and I have to finish for JK, Journaling Crazy Island Style. I have to finish, I have to finish my October editing. It's due tomorrow. Oops. All right, you guys have fun playing, and like I said, join a Life of Art and Self-Expression, and if you have um, any questions, comments, or concerns, or something you'd like to see in the next video, um, or the next live series, then, uh, you know, make sure and tag me, and I love spending time with you guys this morning, and uh, don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself, because you deserve it. <laughs> all right, I'll see you all later. Bye.